Welcome back to the Keegan and Company podcast. For those who are new to the show, my name is Keegan Hipgrave. And if you haven't already, could I get you to jump over? Give us a little like and subscribe. It's a great way for us to grow the podcast and enhance production and have some amazing guests on like I have today. Um, In this episode, I'm joined by one of the greats, one of my favorite people in Sydney, uh, professional cricket player for the Sydney Sixers and professional cricket player for the Australian cricket team, Lauren Cheadle. How are you going? I'm good. Is that a fair, uh, what would you call that, title? Professional yeah. Cricket? yeah, professional cricket. Yeah, we're moving that way, which is so exciting. But um, yeah, I think like I just got back from India with the Australian team, but I'm not full time there yet, but um, hopefully on the way. It's um, it's so exciting. Like for those who don't know, Cheats, you just got back from <laughs> India with the Australian, um, the Australian cricket side. You literally got back, what, yesterday? Yeah, a couple of days How ago. How are you feeling? You still jet lagged? I am jet lagged, <laughs> yes, but um, still on a high from the experience. It was so, so good. It looked, um, it, it obviously looked incredible. And I didn't know you got back yesterday. Mm. Yep, yesterday, right? Because mm. um, we, were, we were FaceTiming. Like, I just got back from India. I was like, oh, I didn't even know. I was like, I'm coming to Sydney tomorrow. Let's sit down and do a <laughs> Let's podcast. Catch up. I was like, are you free tomorrow afternoon? You're like, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> but how are you feeling? You're a little bit jet lagged or you're good? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. We, um, we train today. I've got a game tomorrow. So i um, got to snap out of it pretty fast. But as I said, like, I'm still on a high from the whole experience in India itself. It's such an incredible place. So, um, yeah, I feel really lucky to be back. And your story is incredible and I really want to dive into it today. It's um, obviously a bit of a roller coaster. Um, we've known each other for um, a few years now, which is really cool and, and we've had conversations throughout those years about uh, overcoming injuries and selection and life after sport and, and I really want to dive into that today. But I kind of want to start with, with the Aussie team selection like mm-hmm. um, more recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago. How, how did you find out about decide like was it was the Aussie team even on the radar for you like literally not at all like I wasn't thinking about anything outside of the WBBO which was the timeline of what we're in um when I was selected so um for those that don't know the big bash runs for about six weeks over um November (laughs) October November it's the T20 comp for us I play for the sixes and um we're actually in Hobart um I just got back from a walk with some of the girls to get some coffee I was freezing yeah like it was so cold yeah. and I was literally I was wrapped up in my bed like blanket <laughs> all the way up and I was scrolling through TikTok and Instagram just on my phone and then I had a call from the head selector yeah and I, just, I threw my phone I was like what have I what have I done <laughs> so, <laughs> Why numbers are you obviously calling? already saved yeah yeah because yeah, I like I played for Australia back in the like six or seven years ago when you were 17 back yeah. in the day yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. um and um and all those people are still still the same in, in those roles so I had the number saved and I knew who it was and I, but I still didn't know why he was calling yeah and um so I kind of like rushed to shut my door because you share apartments with someone yeah. else and picked it up and I'm like hello like and it's like the awkward I feel like you know in sport like the awkward small talk with like coaches and stuff before they tell you hey mate how yeah, are you hey, what's the latest how's the weather yeah. and I'm like oh cold <laughs> where are you I'm Tazzy like got a game tomorrow yeah. said, oh that's right uh, so, and then he went on to say, um, he actually phrased it, um, would you like to come to Christmas in Mumbai? Cause it was over the Christmas period. And I was a bit like, when you, like, <laughs> a, ho- like a holiday? <laughs> yeah. I was like, mm, I don't know. Um, and then he was like, you're selected in the, in the test squad and like tears just started streaming down my face. I had no idea how to react and I kind of missed the second half of the call. I just phased out completely. Yeah. So like after I hung up. I didn't actually know any info about what was going on. Yeah. Can you actually like, just email me all that for I'm me? like, oh, the date's not sure. No, it's around Christmas. Um, but it was really cool. I was sharing an apartment with one of my close friends in, in the team, Maitland. And um, I feel like I had to tell her because I was crying. Yeah. And I didn't want to ask her what was wrong yeah. or whatever. Tears so, of joy though. Yeah. So yeah. I walked out and I let her know. And she got a bit emotional too. And she goes, you got to call your family. you got to call James. Um, so I did all that over FaceTime and they were all crying. And um, yeah, it was a really... Um, exciting time, but it felt like it all came so fast. What did um What did mom and dad say? Oh, they couldn't get a word out. They were crying as really? well. Did you call were, you? Who was the Who was the first call? Mom and uh, dad. 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 I called yeah. my dad. Yeah, so yeah. Um, he's played like a massive part in my career growing up. He would throw balls down at the nets and yeah. um, coach my first team um, to get like so. Girls didn't really play cricket when I first started, and yeah. um, and I wasn't really 
confident enough to get into boys cricket at the time and my dad became president of the association put in all these rules that everyone had to get involved and like threw me in there and really? then coached my first under, so, under 10s so team so your dad changed legislation to get you in there to be like oh, i go love on, that you can go like you, like there's nothing stopping you and i feel like that's carried with me um in anything that i do and um yeah so he was definitely the first one that i picked the phone up to call and um yeah he was so proud and um, what they say what do you say uh, he just honestly he just welled up and just um, was saying how proud he was and um, how excited for the opportunity he was and um, yeah. I think like because um, you're you are a very hard worker and we'll talk about overcoming injuries later later on. But I think the biggest compliment like you can pay your parents is like working hard and seeing the success come from that. Like they would have been so proud getting yeah. that phone call. Yeah, they were, and they're also the people that ride with me through the lowest of lows and. Um, you know, they've seen me at my worst and, and still encouraged me to keep going and um, like it'll pay off eventually and for that to have happened is um, for them was such a joy. G- growing up, you said your dad was throwing um, balls throwing balls at you when, mm. you when you were younger. What what age does that start kicking in? Like at what, at what age were you like, oh, I actually like this sport. Like where did it, where did it <laughs> yeah, all start? It's such a rogue sport. In, in, in Barrel as <laughs> yeah. well, like country girl. Yeah, yeah so um, I played in the backyard. I got an older brother. Um, Ollie and um, they were kind of playing in the backyard and as like the annoying little sister I was just kind of jealous I didn't have time yeah, with them yeah. and so I would jump in and um, I suppose naturally athletically I wasn't that uncoordinated so it didn't feel too strange to play like cricket's quite a strange sport on the body mm. um, and then I just fell in love with watching the sport so I would sit down and watch test match which is five days on the tv not miss a ball next to my dad just asking all these questions about um, like the laws of cricket and would would you try this would you try that what would you do if you're in this position because he played professionally for England yeah, okay. yeah so yeah. he's got like a big background in cricket and I just picked his brains every chance I could get and I fell in love with the sport that way mm. um and then whenever I saw it on the tv I'd try and do it in the backyard to my brother and and his friends and um kind of worked out from there and then yeah I played that in that under 10s team that um yeah, yeah. he got together and um I think women's cricket at the time. I didn't know there was a professional women's cricket team mm. at the time. I didn't even know there was. But there was women back in the day. Playing. There was. Yeah, yeah okay. there's been for a very long time. But I didn't even know that was a thing. So all I could see on the TV were men. The boys. And what I wanted to be was a men's cricket player as a girl because I just didn't know there was girls. And actually, um, they had a World Cup game at Bradman Oval, which is a local ground in Barrel. Mm. And I was just at the nets with my friends. Um, who boys and then I was like oh like there's a girls team here and it was the Australian women's crew team playing a world cup game no against the West Indies. how old were you then uh I would have been like eight or nine no way who were the who were the girls in the team like do you, do so you Alex but I played with Alex but yes yeah, so no she way. captained, oh, she captained my first New South Wales team That's and then so when cool. I played for Thunder in Big Basho one she was a captain there as well and I was doing. I ended up doing the scoreboard. Yeah. Um. Just because I loved cricket, and I was like, oh my god, there's professional women's like there's an Australian version. And then from there, um, all I wanted to do was play cricket for. Did you Australia. get any cute photos with with the girls when no, you were? I was so shy. Yeah. Oh, and they were playing a World geez. Cup game, and I was just like. But that's a pretty. That's a pretty. That's probably not a common sport for young girls yeah. to be playing, or is it different yeah. in barrel? No, like I was the only girl in the comp um, when I played school cricket. For first, I was the only girl in the whole competition. Um, it's changed now. There's a whole girls comp, which is wild. Yeah. Um, and lots of girls playing in boys sport in um, boys teams as well. So it's changed dramatically. But at the time, I didn't really know any other girls. Um, so to see that, um, you know, in front of my what I would call my home ground mm. was just changed everything. So what was the what was the progression going from like? young 10 year old girl to teenager thinking what, at what age did you think oh actually this is something that I, I want to do professionally or I can even do professionally is that something you thought about at all yeah so I was in like year five year six and then from there I was shot straight into the New South Wales pathway um so there were some coaches that came down to coach some boys teams and they put me in the girls um kind of pool which mm. was quite small at the time um, but all my trials were with the boys to get yeah. to this girls team. Yeah. I was at the boys trials. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I played in the New South Wales PWSA women's team. Mm. Um, and then I played 12s, 15s, 18s, um, all uh, before I turned 13 and then, um, got my first contract professionally at 15. That's huge. It was so wild. It ha- a- but it happened so quick. But is that, that, that's rare. Yeah. That's rare for, 
a 15 year old girl to be getting the first contract yeah it's quite young yeah it's, it yeah, is yeah. Quite like, young. It's, it's not just um, me thinking that yeah, 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 <laughs> like, quite you say young. that very blase like yeah. i was 15 you know this yeah. is it i was like that's actually fucking it's wild so, yeah it's so crazy and looking back like whether i was ready for it or not i'm, I'm not really sure but mm. um just where the game was at the time semi professional that not that many um women playing and I, i'm a left-handed bowler which is also quite rare still quite rare in mm. the game um, I was just kind of shot through the pathway and it felt like it was all going really smoothly until it wasn't. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, my, my journey until then was super smooth and really enjoyable. I still played boys cricket on the side mm. um, and I think, like, that's where I got probably my competitive edge in the girls' game, yep. growing up playing boys cricket. Um, but, yeah, so... so that would that well. would have to have shaped this type of, like, play you are, like, playing against the boys, yeah? Like, mm-hmm. I think about that in, in all sports, whether you're, you know, a young female girl playing against the boys or even footy girls now, like, in the AFLW and the NRLW, like, a lot of those girls when we were coming through were playing against the boys. And yeah. they had to be in boys' teams until they were 12, 13, before they could, you know, actually they, there wasn't any girls' teams back then, so yeah. they had to go and, and do their own thing. Just um, so crazy to think about now with the landscape of women's sport. And we're talking like eight years ago. Not that long ago. Like <laughs> yeah. when we were like when we yeah. were teenagers. And yeah. and I can imagine the the eyeballs or the governing bodies like trying to get the eyeballs of grassroots mm. sports now. Like mm. is that something that's talked about throughout um, throughout female cricket? At the moment, is that so like they're they putting a bit of investment into kids sport? Yeah, so we, um, as the ACA, the Cricket Association, um, a lot of their funding, a section that goes to grassroots cricket, right. um, I think it's quite evenly spread between the girls and boys, which I love. Um, and their numbers are great. I think the target audience is um, like 8 to 15 um, of getting people into the sport because mm. it's quite a hard sport to enter when you're 15 plus yeah it's kind of a sport you need to you need to get into young and but then it's also the part of just enjoying the sport for what it is like not coming in it to be the next australian player it's coming in it to get outside to be with your mates um to exercise like it's such a an australian sport yeah um that a lot of that money goes to grassroots which we find um like now they're starting to come through the underage pathway and they are so good really like the the talent coming through is unreal like a, through, a few of them are bursting through the Australian setup right now, like mm. 18, 19, 20. Miles better than any other, like anyone you, else like who was 18, 19, 100%, 20. Yeah. 100%. So did, you play, did you play any other sports growing up? I played a bit of netball yep. in the winter. Um, I loved playing netball. It kind of also like when I was playing cricket, I was one of the boys, had all boyfriends and then – the girls was kind of felt like a stereotypical, like really opposite. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like the girly girls and um, I just had two very different set of friendships, yeah. um, which I felt like balanced my social life out beautifully. Um, and I'm still mates with them to this day. We've, we've been in the same team since we were 10 years old um, until the end of high school. So um, I had to, I just stopped playing netball when I, when I um, signed a contract with Cricket New South Wales. Um, but yeah, I think – and also it made me not be obsessed with cricket for yeah. the first kind of five, six years of – Was that a hard choice? Because I imagine there are a lot of kids, mm. um, myself included, that was like you have to make a decision on what you want to do. You can't play every single sport or yeah. you can't – Why? <laughs> why not? Like yeah, I want to I play want footy, to. I want to surf, I yeah. want to play cricket, I want to do everything. <laughs> yeah. um, was that a hard decision to make or was it always like cricket – nah, cricket's going to be it? Yeah, uh, it's hard to think about because I wasn't – that good at netball I loved it um but it was like here here's a professional contract at 15 or you can keep playing like club netball Mm. like do you know what I mean so the decision was easy of which way to go but then missing netball was still really hard and I still wish I could play netball yeah um but yeah cricket I feel like cricket was always going to be the option for me beautiful I want to um I want to come back to the the India trip how how mm. was it how did we go you obviously you obviously won all three of them um how how was the experience it was so wild we um so I've played um ODIs and T20s for Australia before yeah. when I was um 16 17 but I hadn't played a test match mm. um and that was the squad that I was in for for India so um, I got to receive my baggy green from Elise Perry, who has played such a crucial role in my career um, and That's super so. special. How so? Um, so she kind of like put me under a wing. She's one of the best athletes I feel like in any sport um, in the world. Um, such a professional, um, such a good human as well at the same time. So 
um, as a younger athlete in the New South Wales setup, she's from New South Wales, um, kind of showed me the way. Yeah. Um, she let me stay at her house when I was in Barrel um, because it was two hours to get to training to and from and mm. um, we were becoming more professional. So it was four or five days a week. She's like, you can stay at my house like for free pretty much. Like um, it's always here if you need it. She's always there. She'll call me if something goes well in my life just to say congratulations or um, just someone who really cared about my journey. Um, so for her to be able to present me with my bag of green, like the prize possession in Australian cricket – um, was super incredible, um, and yeah. Then the, the we didn't win the test match um, in India, which was um, hard because the Australian team so used to winning. The one that just went. So they won the ODIs. Yes. Um, but the test is like completely different because um, it's a four day um, just grind in Indian conditions, and you know when the men test there, they find it nearly impossible to win over there. Mm. And we went over there and we found out why. Yeah. But um, I think that challenging experience has only made me and everyone else a better cricketer for that. Um, and then they switched to the ODI format, which they're world champs at, and they smash out all three yeah. um, and, and win that. So they've got the T20s still over there to come. So that'll be a really cool contest. Um, but, yeah, the test match was wild. I, um, can, you, can you explain to me the difference between the UDI and the test match and – uh, T20. Yeah, so um, the test in men's cricket is five days. Yeah. In women's cricket, it's four days. Um, and both teams have to bat and bowl twice. Yeah. And whoever has the most runs at the end of that will win. Yeah. But it, it's literally nine to five over, fu- over four days. Okay. So the grind of that and the ebbs and flows of where that can go is so crazy and how it can change quickly but also take so much time to do so. And, um, you know, you're never out of the contest you know, we were probably beaten on day one <coughs> with the – we batted first. We didn't score enough runs. Mm. But we were still in it by day four. Um, and I just love that about test cricket. Um, and ODIs is a 50 over. So um, you bat and bowl once for just 50 overs. Mm. But in test cricket, a day is 100 overs. Yeah, so okay. it's like two ODIs in the in the one day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the T20 is just 20 overs each side. But what's, all once. what's the pinnacle? Is, te- is test, te- test? For me, is it's the pinnacle. test cricket. Yeah, because yeah. I know, because you obviously, uh, you've been, like you were selected as, as a 17-year-old for the Australian cricket side, right? Yeah. Like when, and then I saw you get the baggy green. I was like, I wonder how that's different. I was like, this is yeah. something that I should yeah. know. Haven't you already <laughs> played for Australia <laughs> before? Like, Haven't you already played? I was, like, yeah. I was wondering for the difference, but that that's obviously, that's yeah, yeah, it, Yeah, right? different format. Yeah. So, um, and they're so rare. We hardly play any of them. So over the last kind of three or four years, we played like two a year. Yeah. Um, but before that, it's one every second year in the Ashes against England. That's it. Wow. Whereas, like, the men play five or six a year. Yeah, okay. So, but just the demand on your body is so much harder and um, you just got to be switched on for longer. And if you're not, like, it changes the game. And just, so, how long, how long were you over there for? Um, just under a month. Just under a month. And so, you played the, the four days into the UDIs after that? Yeah, into the UDIs. And then I've come home and the girls are still over there. Okay. Yeah. Right. So how was um how are you like are you happy with the way you played? Did you get enough time time? Like wh- how wh- what was the setup? Yeah, um, it was good. I feel like every athlete will want to play better on the day. Yeah. Um, but as I said, like the experience that I've got from that is like something that's going to hopefully take my career forward. And um, I had James come over, my partner come over so for cool. Christmas because yeah. we had Christmas over there, which was again was a really strange experience to um have Christmas in India. Um. And just a lot of the other girls' partners and family were over there for the coaches and stuff. So we ended up going through Mumbai. We drove like 50 minutes um, through the city and then we came to like these dodgy elevator doors and dressed in like Christmas kids. Yeah. So we all like dr- dressed up for Christmas and these people in the street going, what are you doing here? Yeah. Um, and we went up and it was like you could have been in Sydney, like a rooftop bar in Sydney. Like it was this beautiful um, place that they – um, opened up for us and that they catered it for us and shut it off for, for just our family and friends. So um, I did really enjoy Christmas over there. Did you um, did you get to travel around at all or were you pretty pretty locked in? No, we were just in Mumbai. So yeah. all the games were in Mumbai, but um, I get to go back there in February for the um, WPL. So hopefully we can do a bit more traveling around then. How was the food? Hmm. We talked... Oh, you're yeah. not like, you don't like I don't spicy, like spicy we, food. We had this we conversa- had, yeah. yeah, we had this conversation. Like it's beautiful and... 
I'm sure the spicy food was lovely, but I did not touch it just because I just, I can't do spicy Jeez, you food. you got to do it while I you're know, there. I know, I know. I'll go back. When I go back, I'll try some more. Yeah, great. But um, it's risky over there. It's, well, when you're playing 100%. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and if you think chi- like Australian yeah. chilies are hot, like imagine getting over there with their spices. Uh, so. I know. And they're like, it's not spicy. I tried it. I'm like dripping with nah. sweat. I'm like, I can't do the spicy Get stuff over milk. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cheats, this is obviously like, this is a mental health and sport mm. podcast and um, and I'm, I'm really grateful to have you on. Like, I think it's it's uh, it's pretty special to have someone like yourself um, playing in the Australian cricket side come on to a platform like this, a long form platform, um, and be open uh, to having these conversations. I think for me, when I started this, I um, I always thought like like athletes were you know the people who I looked up to growing up. Probably very similar to yourself, like. And I always thought if if they can be seen having conversations about their own vulnerabilities, examples of resilience, then fucking makes it okay for the rest of us, right? Yeah. So so I am very grateful to have you on um, and and share as much as you as much as you like. Um, there's no such thing as false vulnerability, and and our conversations over the years, I, I look at you as someone who has overcome enormous challenges, right? Through through sport and and with injuries, and and I'd probably like to start with um, probably around just after 15s um, when probably it started getting a little bit tough. Like what, mm. what, what, what did it look like for you in terms of injuries and, and coming into professional professional sport? Yeah, I mean, as I touched on before, it felt like I was smooth sailing for, for what felt like so long of my start of my career. Um, it was like two years and yeah. I was like, this is easy. Yeah, like this. I went to a World Cup, I came back to my maths exam, I was still at school. Um, my friends didn't treat me any differently. They didn't, half of them didn't even know what cricket, how cricket worked. So um, I feel like I had a really good balance of being a, a year 10 student at Chev. Um, just, just before that, you go, you play for the Australian cricket team at uh, 17 years old and you come back and, and play and do and your maths yeah, exam. Yeah, it was around like <laughs> HSC time. <laughs> I did like so many exams over there and all the girls would help out. I'm like, how do you do this? They're like, oh, they like, try this. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, which is so crazy to think of, like that doesn't really happen that often. Um, Ve- hardly ever, right? So like to reflect on that is actually really cool. Yeah. Um, it's probably something I need to do more often, but... Um, that was just my reality at the time. And then through netball, I actually had some shoulder injuries. Like I dislocated both of my shoulders, um, not at the same time, but um, just throughout. And I wasn't in professional pathway. They kind of popped them back in, put them in a sling for four weeks and, you know, off you go again. So I never really got them back to full strength or worked on them that much. And as soon as I was put into um, a professional pathway where we, you know, you have to lift heavy, you have to dive on the ground, throw, bowl, um, I just pop straight out. So, um, and you know, once you do a shoulder, it comes loose and probably gonna you kind do it of, again. yeah. So, you know, I had some shoulder issues, um, tried to work through it, like worked my butt off with strength. Like I wanted just to keep going the way I was going. And, um, I had it taped for about three months every day just to keep it in its place while still trying to train and play. And then got to the point where we're running a 2k time trial and on the last lap when we were running, it just starts sliding um, out of its socket. And um, the person behind me was like, geez, like your shoulder's coming out. I'm like, I know. <laughs> She's like, stop. And I'm like, there's 400 metres left. Like if it's going to happen, at least happen at the start of the 2K test. And then so she like pulls me off the track and calls over the physio. And like I couldn't feel my hand or anything. And my shoulder was just slid out of the socket. But, but wait, wait, wait. From we, running. Like, yeah. So we, we run. So it's a... It, you, you could feel it slowly yeah, popping sliding out. sliding out. Because it, it was so loose at that point that wow. um, like I couldn't like get dressed without being like, oh, it's probably going to dislocate or like reach for my washing or do anything. But I was still like, yeah, I'm good to play. Like it's fine. Um, but, yeah, running was the final shot. They're like, um, you have to get it. If you can't, We're yeah. going to have to read it. Might um, be a silly question. Um, but when you're running, can you just like – well, that's what hold, I was trying to do. Hold it up while I was, you're she's running. like, it's dislocated. I'm like, I know, but like, I've run one and a half k. I need to run the last 400. Otherwise, this is honestly useless. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. And like, you're out of breath. It's like the worst test in cricket. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I, I had it done after that. I missed a World Cup and an Ashes series. Um. And it took you know six or seven months to come back from that. Um. All good. Came back and then I was getting ready for an Ashes, which is Australia versus England, probably one of the pinnacles of of um, competitions and, you know, my back was really sore and um, I started, my hammy started to get really sore 
And then um, the test match selection was up for grabs. It was between me and one other girl. And in the nets beforehand, I was just bowling and I couldn't like walk without limping or like, but I still was like, nah, I'm playing this test match. So to me, I felt like I was running in normally and bowling normally. (laughs) And I looked back at the footage. I was like, like, (laughs) yeah, I was so bad. And they would have like, they saw that and like, you're not even up for selection anymore, which at the time felt awful. Like it, I felt heartbroken. It was like all I wanted to do was play test cricket for Australia. Um, anyway, I ran drinks for the four days and then after that I got a scan and I had a stress fracture um, in my sacrum, which is like the bottom of your yeah, below um, lumbar, yeah. of your spine, yeah. um, which usually like long distance run. Like it's such a non-existent injury in cricketers. Mm. Um, but stress fractures are though. Yeah, so higher, bullets. yeah, so like mid, lower back is quite n- not uncommon. Um, in, in quicks, especially young quicks. But this where they're like, um, do you do like long distance driving? I'm like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on to the wrong gal. <laughs> hey, I'll take it as a compliment yeah, though. <laughs> I'm glad you think so, but no. Yeah. Um, and it was just from the load up of bowling too much at a young age, probably not being strong enough. Um, and that was nearly a year for that to heal because I kind of lost a feeling in my hamstring. Like I had crutches for like four or five weeks because it ran down neurally. Did you do the op? No, I didn't need an operation, just thank rehab. goodness. Yeah. Um, just, well, I had to just stop for like three or four months, which, which I found my... so hard. Yeah. Um, I love watching cricket in games that I'm not meant to be playing in, but the games that I'm meant to be playing, I find them so hard to watch. Really? Um, so that was um, a bit of a struggle to get through that, um, but I was still at school. I still had heaps of distractions um, and I was still backed by Cricket Australia, so I still had a contract at that time with them. Um, cause their contracts work kind of one year at a time. Mm. Um, so I was lucky enough to still be on one of those. And then I came back from that, um, played, you know, not even half a season, dove on my shoulder and did it again. Shoulder, same shoulder? Other shoulder. Other shoulder, far out. Um, and needed that done straight away. So had that done. Um, that's another six months. That took longer, um, just cause it was a different type of operation. So that was like seven to eight, um, was the timeline it was meant to take and it took nine months um, just because the season didn't start for the, the extra month. So it was kind of in pre-season. Um, but I came back from that, hadn't even played a game yet and did it my first shoulder again in the gym. So we were doing this, um, um, what's it called? Bench pull. Yeah. Like test. So yep. one RM bench pull. And for some reason, like only one of my arms was working. <laughs> so mm. I pulled up. Um, with my right arm and my left arm just kept going with the weight of the bar and it just took my shoulder out of the socket um, and I was kind of just frozen on the on the bed and just like in disbelief. I was like, how can this happen, you know, for a third time in something that I feel like should be really safe that I do all the time and um, something little has just gone off and it's going to take me out for another seven months. Um, so I found that one really hard to come back from. And I imagine because it's you, – you talk about you just come back from it and you say it very, like, very blasé, but I imagine, like, people don't understand the amount of work mm. and rehab that it takes to come back from a shoulder rico. Yeah. Like, even, like, even when you're resting with your with your stresses in your back, like, you still need to do work when you come back. Yes, you have to rest at the beginning, but even standing outside of it, like, it's a long process. Yeah. And you tr- – like, because very similar to you, like, had – 10 hamstring tears on, yeah. on one side when I was playing That's footy. So cooked, and and I and after the fifth one, like crying to dad, mm. I'm done, I'm not gonna play footy anymore. Mm. Like, and I was like 19 years old. Like, um, <clears throat> but you think of everything. And I imagine, were you the same? Like, were you going like specialists or were you talking to coaches? Like, why does this keep happening to me? Yeah, I definitely posed question over and over, but it was like your genetic makeup, like you're quite um, hypermobile was one of them. Yeah. Um, and at the time, like I wasn't that strong. One, because I was quite young and two, because I pretty much all I was doing was rehabbing. So it's like um, I went through this nasty cycle of just the same things just happening over and over again. Um, and it was for the reason because they wanted me back playing cricket. Yeah. Um, so potentially looking back, it could have been rushed a little bit. Um, I still ticked off everything in my rehab and then it's like, all right, we'll get you back into a game, try and get you to play for New South Wales and then Australia. And of course you're going to say yes to that. Yes. You want to be playing. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, I never had. I still haven't to this day had a preseason, like a block of eight weeks and where you lift and run. And I'm 25, and I've been playing since I was 15. So that plays a part in it as well, I would presume, um, because that's the part where you get strong, where you prevent the things from happening in season, in preseason. So um, looking to break that cycle this year. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As much as preseason sucks, you need it. Like well, you don't know what it's it. like because you've no, never done it. <laughs> no, yeah. Sorry to all the athletes that grind out preseason for the last 10 years. I do. I watch how hard it is, yes. and the stuff that I'm doing still feels hard. But it's not. It's not the same when your body's a preseason. So mm. I'm desperate to have a full one of those. Um, but yeah, after my sh- third shoulder, I was I was questioning if I was doing the right thing, um, just because. Well, one, I felt like I was letting people down. All these people, they put funding, um, doctors, physios, SNCs, coaches outside of the regular program for the girls because it's a different program yeah. altogether just into me pouring it into me and so much time and I can't get up for a game like I felt so guilty that I was just wasting people's time and um, I didn't really think about that until more recently um, where I was like I'm done with the sport I'm probably not going to play again um, but then I kind of I thought about it and I was like nah like I brushed it put it aside kept going and then did my shoulder again, my right shoulder again. Um, what year? When was this? What year was this? Two years ago now. Okay. Um, uh, in the last game of the season, um, the game was gone. Like there's no way we could have won it. Um, someone just threw a ball and I went to stop it by diving and I landed wrong and popped my shoulder out. And I remember I was sitting um, in the change room. I didn't really know if it was out, actually. I was walking off with my aunt, like my hand holding my elbow, just being like, it feels off. I can't really tell. My hands are a bit funny. And I sat in the chair and the doctor was like, your shoulder's not in. I was like, well, can you please put it back in? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So she put it over the side and, you know, like pulled it down. And I was just screaming in the change room. And our coach at the time, Ben Sawyer for the Sixers, was sitting just in front of me, like, head in hands, like how can this happen again? Like people who cared about my journey and um, I'm just like screaming in a chair trying to get my shoulder back in and just after it's in you just feel so flat. Yeah. Like um, pain's kind of gone but you just feel so awful that it's just happened again because, you know, you know what's coming up, you know the impact it has on your teammates uh, and the team and the coaches and the everyone behind the scenes, your family. Um and that was really, really tough. I remember that was in Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. Um, but we got back on the horse and we we did the rehab um, and we came back. And who, who, sorry to interrupt. Who do you who do you call? Who do you who do you lean on when after you're sitting there you just swapped the back in? You said you're flat. Yeah. Who do you talk to? Um, well, I'm blessed to have the most amazing teammates um, you could come across. Pez, at least being one of them. Um, and, you know, I was in a sling and I was – I couldn't really look at anyone and, you know, they'd come around next to me, put their arm around me and be like, it's okay. Like, you've done it before, you can do it again. Um, and they would just support me in any way they could. You know, they'd come over, they'd cook food. Um, whoever was closest living to me would drive me somewhere. Um, um, people would hang back and do the runs with me um, or do an extra lift when I had a rehab lift. Mm. Um and they'd kind of rotate those kind of four things. That's so, so nice. It's ridiculous. That is so lovely. I know. Yeah. And it's like there's no way you're going to keep not keep pushing when you've got those kind of people around you. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, that made that journey a lot easier for what it was. But that would be a huge, like, um, I guess, like, testament to your character and your skill level for, um, like you talked about before, how, you know, the, the governing body putting so much, investing so much time and energy and funding into you, that would just must show the type of person that you are and, and probably the amount of skill that you have to continue to stay on board, yeah. right? Like, um, and, and be as humble as you want to, yeah. but, the, but wouldn't, wouldn't that play a part in, because I know I always relate it to footy, mm. <clears throat> excuse me, and if you're, if you're injured and coming off contract, a lot of the times they're probably not going to re-sign you. Mm. Is that, uh, yeah. is that a conversation that you had throughout? Well, I've been, yeah, I just, I've been super blessed. Like I've been on long year contracts since I first started. You know, I signed a three year, a four year, a three year. I just signed another three year. Like they have so thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, they have just so much faith in me, which makes me want to keep coming back mm. and, um, you know, show them why. 
and that they've made the right choice. Mm. Um, but in those times where you, you can't do anything, you feel so helpless and it's like that's where you feel like you're letting people down. And I bottled that up for so long until, like as I said recently, when um, probably the last time we caught up, yeah. um, that it was like you sort of push it aside. I think that's the female athlete in me, just like you've got what you're given, deal with it, it's good enough, keep going. Um, whereas like recently I kind of sat down and I was like, I don't know if like who I'm doing it for anymore. Like I didn't know why. Um, and my tank was just empty, man. My tank was so empty. But as I said, it was the people around me that have got me back in. Like I, for context for, for the people listening, like I went to Keegan and I said I was done with cricket. I wasn't coming back. I retiring. I was finished. I will never forget that conversation that we had when we were sitting down and, and you we were having a coffee at Goosebumps. Thinking yeah. about it now. You're like, I'm, I think I'm done. Yeah. yeah. I was serious as well. I, I was I didn't 100% serious. And um, the thing I'm really thankful for from, from your end, it, it was never to try and talk me out of it. It was like, especially with your experience in sport, I was like, all right, like, let, let's talk about it and, and what's next and maybe why are you feeling like this? And having friends and people like that in your life is so important because – rather than, you know, people who are more cricket-focused are like, no, nah, you can't give it up. <coughs> like, what do you mean? Like, you've been playing for 10 years. Like, you're only 25. Like, so much talent as if you're going to stop playing. And I was like, that's not what I needed to hear at that time. It's very hard to navigate that thought process when it's you're in it, you're having a million different ideas. Like, do I do, I do it? Do I not do it? Do I rehab? Do I try and come back? Do I retire? What am I going to do afterwards? There's a million mm. questions going through your head. And like you said, you talk to friends and families, but like they, as much as they love you and want to sympathise with you and want what's best for you, they don't know because yeah. they're not you, yeah. you know, they're not in your position, you know what I mean? And you're the only one who can make the decision. That's mm. why, like, I didn't really say anything. Nah. I was just sort of like asking questions because I wanted to hear from you on what you wanted. And I couldn't, like, to be honest, I couldn't imagine the roller coaster that you've been on in the last yeah. uh, 10 years, <laughs> right? Like, you were four, four shoulder reconstructions. Yeah. Um, you didn't mention the rib, the rib cartilage that you had as well. Yeah, like, still got that. Still got that. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, because what, what was, what's the list you had? Yeah, so four shoulder recos, um, a back stressy. I actually had skin cancer as well. Forgot to Melanoma mention that. Um, I've fractured my rib cartilage, which will never heal. I'm going to have to get it fixed up when I finish. Um, and then, you know, the, the classic hammies and calves. I've done my calf a couple of times. And, um, but I couldn't imagine yeah. that roller coaster. And then, like, of course, like, that is such a sensible thing to do at the end of it being like, you know, I've given – it's not like you haven't given yeah. – you've given it everything yeah. and, and, the, and the rest, yeah. you know, and the rest. So, yeah. well, well – and because it, it's – it's not funny, but it's almost like we had that conversation <laughs> and I was telling you yesterday on FaceTime, we had that conversation and then I saw the photo of you getting the baggy green from Pez yeah. and I was like, that's my girl. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it was – and that time space is like six months, not even. So I was so low in the cricket space. Life was great, which is what also made me question cricket because outside of cricket I was so happy in my relationships, my friendships – um, work outside of sport at what ability um, and I came to cricket I couldn't turn up without bawling my eyes out I couldn't turn up without this overwhelming feeling of I shouldn't be here I don't want to be here the grind that you usually love of the challenges of sport lost it mm. and just everything was steering me towards you've got to stop like this is not what you need or want um, and I think it's because I built that up over 10 years of just pushing whatever was happening yeah, it's happened, push it to the side and just keep going. Um, whereas I came back from England and I had a shin stress fracture, which is rehab wise, you just kind of go mm. sit still for four yeah, weeks. So like the easiest rehab you can go through. Yeah. But that's what tipped me over. It was like, I just can't do it again. I got nothing left. And so um, that's when I you know, spoke to you. I spoke to a psych. Um, we're really lucky at Cricket New South Wales. We've got two psychs, one performance, one off field, which Huge. is unreal. Huge, yeah. Um, and I spoke to her and, you know, kind of let it all out. My first session, I don't reckon I spoke. I just reckon I cried for 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably what that sound, that's and okay. like, that's what I needed at yeah. the time. And um, I was really, like, she's great. And, like, her feedback from that is just, that's just what you need to do right now. And it's completely okay. Mm. Um, whereas I feel like you come to sport with this hard exterior of everything has to be fine and everything has to be perfect and... You know, you can't show the emotion when you're sad. Um, if you're rehabbing, you've got to really try really hard to get back. If you're not picked, you've got to help the girls that are picked. If you're picked, you better play well. Mm. 
And that cycle can, you can get caught up in that really fast. And then when it's not going well, you just feel awful. So I um, saw her, I spoke out and I just took a break, I took a little break. Um, and I think everyone in my team was really surprised. And I was like, wow, did I cover it up that much that no one knew that I was struggling? And I felt bad because I was like, how can I not tell my closest friends that I'm struggling at the time? Um, but the overwhelming support that I had from all of them, from the coaches, um, high performance teammates, friends, was overwhelmingly positive. And it was just, you need to do what you need to do. Um, we're here in any space. Let us know what we can do. And after that break, all I wanted to do was play cricket again. That's so wild. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was full circle. That's the best thing because I the conversation that we have, it was not putting any pressure on yourself. It's mm. like, oh, you, you said it, I think you said it perfectly. You were like, Yes, you want to retire, you want to do that, but like no no pressure. If I if I go back, great. You know, mm. if, and if and if I don't, then that's fine as well. Like either yeah. either option is is fine. And it's so funny that you're like you have the time away and you're like, nah, nah, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. When like knowing it's okay to ask for a break, I think a lot of athletes find really hard to be like, Oh, I need to I need to stop for a little bit because the game moves without you. Mm. With or without you it's moving. So the fear of being left behind is what I felt most. Um, you know, people's gonna, someone's going to have to take your spot when you're gone. They're not going to hold it and for you. And if they do really well, see you later. Mm. But um, that's not what happens realistically. It's they're going to support you in any way, shape or form. And, you know, you'll pick before this for a reason. And if you're fit and ready to go, you know, you'll be back in there and you'll be competing for your spot. Mm. And that healthy competition is, you know, different team for team. But the one at New South Wales is super healthy um, you know, we know we're competing for the same sports, but when it comes to off field, we're all really great mates. Was there so, any other cons that you were thinking about? Because I'm sure that you would have done pros and cons of, of taking yeah, yeah, to the little oh, list. Sure. I know you would have. I know you would have. Because <laughs> um, uh, well, you said like being left behind. Was there anything else that you thought could be a, a big, big play? I think like I um, thrive off the connection of my teammates and just knowing that they were going through experiences together without me. Um, was was tough because I, I went home I saw my family um for a couple months um down in barrel and um the girls were not under instruction but maybe just leave her um let her be for a little bit if she needs something she'll reach out yeah. um so it's like I feel like I was being a bad teammate because I um yeah as I said I thrive on connection um in in that space at Cricket New South Wales so just to not have them there I felt really bad yeah. um but then um, we also have really young talent coming through. So it's, you never know yeah. how they're going to go when you're not there. Um, so, yeah, those were the kind of cons. But to be honest, the pros list was so large, which was why I knew I had to yeah. take the break. But um, I couldn't I couldn't credit the people um, in that um, situation more because I've come out of it um, – one with a baggy green, which is like wild, unreal. Yeah. And um, back playing, I played a full season of Big Bash. Haven't done that in six years. Um, and playing for New South Wales tomorrow. So, like, it's so huge. It's so wild. Yeah. What's um, what's next? What are you What are you excited for going forward? Like, you've you've <coughs> you've uh, you've done the whole roller coaster cheats. Like, yeah. you, like oh. you've done the whole thing. Yeah, you've seen literally. the dance and you've come out and you've seen the light. And like, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of where you are. Like, when I saw that photo insane yeah. like goosebumps like i went and showed mum and dad i was saying with mum and dad at the time like it was um very cool to see but yeah what's what's next what are you what are you excited for yeah it's really hard like over the last little bit i've tried not to think like five years on the field mm. because again like you just never know what's what's going to happen but in the short term um you know there's a home aussie series yep. um which would be you know unreal to be if that be in the squad um not necessarily playing but being in that environment is like so like next level like they're so professional and so good at what they do that I learned in that month mm. I learned more than I had in the last two years Wild. um because it's just all the best cricket reigns and cricket talent in the country the best cricketing country in women's cricket in the one space training under the one like in the one um room and like just to watch them do what they do and how they do it was I'm sure you're bouncing off each other as well. Like yep. you're talking training, like talking in video. Yeah, right? ta yeah, tactics um, in the gym. Everyone's so competitive, so on the track. Um, so that was really cool. And so they've got a series coming up. So, um, you know, hopefully potentially being in there. And if not, I got picked up in the WPL, um, which is the Indian Premier League 
in I think it's in Feb right. um, to going back to India for a month to try the spicy food. Yeah, I, was just, I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> Got to like, try the spicy food. There's a butter chicken with some milk. Um, <laughs> it's all like, they're like, do you eat anything? Because I'm like, butter chicken with no spice. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, that'll be really, really cool. That that started last year. Yeah. Um, I didn't get picked up last year, but was lucky enough to get picked up this year. Mm. Um, insane. So that'll be awesome. Um, and then take some time in off season just to reset instead of rehab. Yeah. Hopefully. Get some sun yeah. down to the beach. What, what do you think has been the biggest learning from the last 10 years that you want to take into, into the next – five, 10, 15 years of playing? What are you, what are you thinking? I think um, taking the time to reflect and acknowledge how I'm feeling has been like the biggest takeaway in the last year. Um, as I said, I just pushed everything to the side, being like, yep, you'll be right and carry on and not really acknowledge what I was going through. Um, and when you let that go enough, you're going to overflow mm. and you're going to explode. And that's what I, what I kind of did. Um, and being able to talk to that with the people around you um, and having that group of friends that you can have that conversation with. Like someone like you, I know a few of my teammates are those people for me, my partner, um, and being okay with being vulnerable, which is such, you know, for some people it's such a tricky space. But um, as you said, the more people that are open to it and the more forthcoming you are with it, the easier it gets and also like the better you feel for it. Was there a point that you thought, you know what, it's actually, it's, uh, this is something that I need to do, like to, 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 to talk about it? Like, was there a point where you're like, I've got to do it? Yeah, it was when I couldn't rock up to training yep. without like <laughs> being a, a mess. I was honestly a mess. I couldn't even, I couldn't even look my teammates in the eye or my coach. Um, so, and like, it shouldn't need to get that far. Mm. Like reflecting, like I didn't need for it to get that far. Um, but it's so common that it does because people just aren't having these conversations. I tell you what, you're not the only person that I've had this exact conversation yeah. with. Can't get out of a car crying. Like they feel like they've got the weight of the world on mm. their shoulders, like multiple things going on and and like the hardest thing's the hardest thing that's ever happened to you, right? And I always use the um, like the Coke bottle analogy. It's like um, anytime you've got a stress or something crazy that's going on in your life, it's like you shaking the Coke bottle. But having the conversation is like slowly releasing the lid and letting the stress and letting the pressure out. If you don't have those conversations, then it's just going to bottle up. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm very um, proactive and, and open about uh, talking about what's going on. But it doesn't have to be to everyone. It doesn't have to be mm. to people you don't know. It's to your support network, right? Yep. Like you lent on people who who you trust and, and who you've got a lot of love for, right? And even even talking to professionals. Like I'm a, yep. I'm a huge uh, believer in um, psychologists and, and talking to them because they uh, – and because uh, they put it in such great um, – I don't know, it just it makes sense. Yeah, they make it make sense. They make it make yeah. sense and they give you the background and the theories of why it makes sense and why you're feeling the way you are. And disclaimer, you might go to one and you might not like them, like, yeah. like, which is totally <laughs> yeah. fair. It's like yeah. dating. You need to find, yeah, you need to find the right fit for you and your psych. Like your psych. And I think um, also this as um, athletes and like perfectionism, like – knowing why you're feeling a, a certain way helps so much in just being okay with it. Um, instead of having this feeling be like, I have no idea why, like how can I, like you feel like it's your fault mm. and then this person lays it out so clearly for you. And like, oh. Well, anxiety is the, <laughs> like the, yeah, 100% <laughs> anxiety is the fear of not knowing. Yeah. So when you can sit down with someone and say, this is why you're feeling this way. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> of course. Oh you're so right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you add someone who's like relatable or yeah. who's been there before. And like, don't get me wrong, like professional is great, but also people who, who have been in similar situations, mm. who have the lived experience. Like I'm sure you probably would have talked to senior players in the team as well about like what they're going through. Like, you going through, like, don't get me wrong, there's probably not many people who have done four um, uh, shoulder recos yeah, and everything else. I wouldn't recommend it either. No, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> wouldn't, it either. But you can get through it. You can get through <laughs> it and you're a living example of that. And yeah. I can't imagine how many people are going to be um, listening to this and being like, well, the far out. Like, if, if, if Chase can get through that, like, I can get through anything. Like, yeah. what, what advice would you give to, to younger crew coming through who are just like, nah, like, I don't think I can keep going anymore. Like, what, was there any advice that you would pass on? 
Yeah, I think like a lot of this chat is about the people you surround yourself with. And um, yeah, again, I'm super blessed to have the teammates that I have and the mates that I have. Um, but it all like what came down to me was like the love of what I'm doing and doing what you love. And that makes the world of difference. Like if you're slogging away at, at something that you don't love, you're not going to get the best out of it. You're not going to want to keep going. So it's finding the little things out of what you're doing to love and um, having the people around you to support you when it's not going well because everything, nothing runs smoothly in life. So when you have little bumps or little hurdles supporting, having the support network around you that are going to, you know, carry you through or, you know, take the load for a little bit, um, let you be emotional, let you um, have a bad day and not judge you for it or hold you to it is so key um, in that journey for me anyway. Um, but, yeah, it's finding the love of, of what you're doing, I think. You said that so beautifully. I love that. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you can't say it any better than that. Well, it's so true. Like every, And I look at you, everything that you do on and off the pitch. I was going to say mm. field, but it's pitch. Field, both. Pitch, same, yeah, yeah. Same, There's same. a pitch grass. on a field. So. There's a pitch on a the field. There's plenty of grass. Um, but what I was going to say is everything that you do, do it because you love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like your stuff on the field with cricket, stuff you do with ability. Like what, what do you think that you'll be doing post cricket? Like, is that something that you think about now? Uh, it was for the last little bit because I, I felt like I had to have something because I generally thought I was stopping and um, like what ability is such like probably like the other half of my life of cricket and um, I'd love to move in the disability support um, space. I've also got a degree in politics as well. Um, so whether that takes me anywhere, I've done a few business things um, to keep me busy because I've done so much time off the field. I had so much time and yeah. we've had great PDM play development managers that encourage you to do um, to study or take something up mm. um, for post career, um, so I was able to to um, fill around with a few things, which is really cool. Um, and but I'd I'd love to work in the space of waterability or support work. Right, and also like trialing, like trialing different things. Like I'm sure mm. you would have thought about a whole bunch of things because it became probably a little bit so more real, real. <laughs> it's like so i'm real. so close to this i could be unemployed <laughs> next week <laughs> but having but having that um having mm. that thought process is probably a beautiful thing to do when you're still in it yeah like and I, yeah i can't encourage it enough to think about post sport or post whatever you're doing right now because you never know what's going to happen like you could you know touch wood but you could go out and do a career ending injury let's say um and you're done. Like sport is cutthroat, man. Like yeah. you are done and that's it. So you need something outside of that. And I feel like – but it also you can't play sport forever. So there is definitely an end date on your career, whether you're 35 or 25, that you need something post. And it's so crucial in female space because especially like income-wise, you don't always have the backing of a 10-year career of potentially your counterpart in the male mm. space. I know that's very stereotypical, but the money coming into women's – sport isn't the same as men so you don't you can't fall back on I can't fall back on my 10 year career of income because it would get me nowhere <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. the shift it's had in the last 10 years is ridiculous yeah. and that we're finally getting paid what we should um but that doesn't discount the last eight years where we weren't right mm. so if something were to happen tomorrow we're going to have another job we still have people that work full-time on the side um and girls that have part-time because Sydney's not the most cheapest city to live in either mm. so um, I feel like that's really strong in the female space. Can't talk for male space, but um, play to man managers and having something outside is crucial. I think the the girls. Well, what I've seen is that the girls transition a lot better than the guys mm. because they are exposed to it more. Yeah, you know, they they a lot of the times when they come in, they've got to have part time jobs because mm. the the professional space isn't full time yet. And I say that like yet because I, I think it's not far away. Well, obviously, there's a few of the girls who are full time. Yeah. Um. But having – and that's just – that's the perfect example. It's like you're in it and you're trialling different things mm. to, to see what you like. And and it's so cool, like I said before, that you're actually thinking about it while you're still in it and it's cool that you've got three more years now and you're conscious yeah. of it. You know, you've got a really great idea of what you want to do with WhatAbility, which is beautiful and they change so many people's lives and I love WhatAbility. But it could, it could be commentating. You could be change. in the media space. Yeah. Like you could – like you've built up such a, a profile now where um, – your love and you're respected by not only your peers but people who look up to you and I think that the crossover between professional sport and 
employers looking for employees or people to work for them mm. it's wild like so because crazy. you're you're hard working you're dedicated you can this overcome so nice. you, i know i know am i getting paid for this no <laughs> but like overcoming resilience talk yeah. about overcoming resilience like yeah. that's the prime you that's the prime you know that's the whole thing um so i don't think there'll be a drama at all. Obviously, yeah. there's always a, a struggle with transition, but I think you're going to be... Says the transition manager. Says the transition <laughs> manager for the NRL, uh, the RLPA. Mm. Um, but I think, no, I think you're going to be good. It's good that you're conscious of it and, and mm. that there's things coming up. Yeah. Cheats, um, this has been a beautiful conversation. Uh, before we wrap things up, is there anything else that you'd like to touch on before, before we finish it up? I don't think so. What's plans for the next couple of weeks? What's going on? Got to play tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Play Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> next week in Perth. Let's go. And then play in Canberra. Uh, and then go to India. Beautiful. And um, then Bangladesh and then chill. Yeah, and then have an <laughs> off season. Um, cheers. Hey, thank you so much for jumping on. I'm so glad that I FaceTimed you yesterday. Um, I can't we, believe that. I know, it's so wild. This was meant to be coffee. We're supposed to do coffee, but I'm glad that we use this as a catch up instead. Yeah. Um, but no, thank you so much for jumping on. Thank you for being open and vulnerable, um, for sharing your experiences. I think there's going to be so many young crew um, who will be listening to the, not even young crew, just any crew in general about overcoming examples of resilience and co- overcoming injuries. Um, I, I've got a lot of love and a lot of respect for you, Cheat. So thank you so much. And I can't wait to see what the next couple of years look like because I think you're going to be smashing it. Oh, thanks, Keegs. Thank you. You're the best. Mm-hmm.